We do this to identify common issues that show up on these vehicles as they age and as they get used and repaired. Uh, we do it to make sure the sellers are disclosing everything, at least so we can tell in the photos and the material provided. And then finally, it's just fun to talk about these. Um, these vehicles are great. And yeah, hopefully these discussions can be helpful if you're in the market to, uh, yeah, to purchase one. So let's go ahead and look at this 1994 we're going to study today. This one is currently bid up to $12,500. It's got five days left and yeah, very good looking truck. Uh, yeah, right off the bat, yeah, we've got some, looks like they've cut in some, assuming this is U.S. market, um, yeah, cut in some side marker lights, uh, looks like a roof rack delete. But before we get into the details of the vehicle, oh, and also flare delete, which, <laughs> yeah, I love Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So this is located in Tampa, Florida. Uh, it's got 202,000 miles. Uh, it is not, oh, it is triple locked. So it, it does have the um, yeah the front, center, and rear differential locks. Uh, it is dark emerald pearl. Interesting. From this particular photo, I wouldn't have given that dark emerald pearl. So it must be the lighting uh, in that particular photo. Uh, generally, dark emerald pearl rarely comes off as like actually green. This is kind of showing up as like a yeah you know, like a blue slate to me. But anyway, they say dark emerald pearl paint. Uh, it's got 16 inch alloy wheels. Those look to be uh, refinished. It's got a one inch lift kit and a Pioneer Premier head unit. Um, it's got a Carfax report, it doesn't say clean there, so let's get into the details. So moving here to the left, um, additional equipment includes, yeah, the lift kit, the Pioneer Premier head unit, WeatherTech floor mats and air conditioning. The seller acquired the truck in 2022, and in 2023, the valve cover gasket, spark plugs, front main seal, oil pump seal, fan clutch, oil pan seal, uh, which one? Was it the lower one or the, uh, the upper one? Uh, radiator hoses, water pump, belt, fuel filter, shocks, sway bar bushings, axle seals, power steering lines, and brake booster were replaced. So it sounds like they did quite a bit of work on this one. Um, this one is being sold by Tampa Cruisers. Um, they have interacted with um, Manny, I believe, who kind of maybe runs their bring a trailer stuff, but I've interacted with him on, on prior vehicles. And yeah, generally they seem to do a pretty good job. The last one that I remember, at least that caught my attention, them auctioning was a, a white one that yeah, we called out some um, damage on the front right fence that I, I can't remember if it was uh, if they knew about it or not but yeah they we you know went through the effort to get yeah paint meter readings anyway you can check that video in my um yeah, in my history, I'll include a link in the description so you can check that out. But anyway, this back to this vehicle. So it's got 202,000 miles. Uh, it's got service records and a clean Florida tighter title in the seller's name. And the truck was finished from the factory in dark emerald pearl and received a repaint in 2021. Uh, so that's before these uh, the seller picked it up, at which time the roof rails and fender flares were removed. Uh, so that's going to yeah pose or create a lot of questions. You know, like, how was that done? Was it done well? Exterior features include a sunroof, power adjustable side mirrors, Japanese market fender turn signals, right? So we talked about those before. So this is yeah, definitely a U.S. market truck with those modifications. In 2023, the wiper blades, tail lights, antenna grommet, and base, tailgate emblems, and hood and tailgate shocks were replaced. Uh, the Carfax report notes an accident with another vehicle in a May 2012 entry, though no further details are provided. And the seller notes scratches on the right and left fenders. So yeah, I mean, like overall, yeah, clean looking truck. Uh, one notable thing that's missing, which is something I'm doing on my 95 after pulling off the fender flares, is getting the uh, no fender flare mud flaps. I think that's a big deal. Um, it, the truck looks clean without them, but yeah, definitely I'm a big proponent of the mud flaps just to keep yeah, your undercarriage uh, clean. Uh, so the 16-inch alloy wheels were powder-coated in 2021 and are mounted with 285, 75, 16. Uh, again, come on, bring a trailer. Get your copyright. It's K-O, not zero, K-O-2. By the way, if you're looking for KO2 tires like on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, uh, one good way to find some listings that don't get as much attention as others is to search K02. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you can find pretty good deals. People are like, why aren't my tires selling? It's because you're using the wrong, uh, the wrong name for them. All right, so going back through 2023 and the work that was done, you know, we've talked about all this. It looks like the brake pads were replaced and 555 brand tie rod ends, a Dobinson steering dampener, and a Cruiser Outfitters knuckle rebuild kit with coil bearings were installed. So sounds like 
this thing should be yeah pretty much ready to go based on yeah the list of maintenance items that were done. Uh, the front bucket seats and second row bench were retrimmed in gray leather upholstery, and the carpeting and center deflock switch were replaced under current ownership. Uh, yeah, so I'm yeah curious because that looks like a pretty good kit. I'm curious where they got it from. Uh, interior amended, and we'll go over that. We'll hopefully we'll see better. You know if it's good or bad, but usually uh, Tampa Cruisers picks pretty good stuff. Uh, it's got the floor mats, digital clock, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the power operated door locks work intermittently. Uh, no discussion on which ones. The rears and the tailgate one aren't, or the upper hatch one aren't so bad to yeah, replace. And the parts are available through uh, ASN. But yeah, the fronts are kind of a different story. So that's worth clarifying which ones, just so you can gauge you know, how much effort you're going to have to spend to get that right. Uh, photos of the removed third row folding seats are shown in the gallery, um, even though yeah, it sounds like they're not with the vehicle at the moment. Uh, let's see. So nothing else going on. They've put on about 2000 miles since they picked this up. So in 2022, they picked it up at 200,000 miles. So you could imagine what the, what the price would have been for that. Uh, in preparation for the sale, the valve cover gasket, spark plugs, front main seal, uh, blah, blah, blah. All of these kind of normal, uh, things on the front of the engine that caused the leaks. Looks like that's all been addressed. Uh, let's see the water pump, uh, fuel and air filters were replaced in the military and military grade battery terminals were installed and oil change was performed and the coolant was flushed. Uh, so I don't see any notes about like power steering fluid being changed. I mean, they did replace power steering hoses, um, but yeah, was the power steering fluid changed? Was the brake fluid? Those things can be value adders, um, you know, if you're interested. Let's see. I mean, the undercarriage, at least from this distance, looks pretty good. looks like some of these holes are kind of enlarged a little bit, and that's a little curious. Uh, the catalytic converters have been removed, okay, and rust is noted on the fuel tank skid plate. So, yeah, depending on where you live, the fact that the cats are removed, um, yeah, could be, you can see that right there, they're just not present in that photo. Um, that could be an issue, because, yeah, you probably wouldn't, um, yeah, wouldn't pass emissions. Looking here at the detail, ooh, so the Carfax <laughs> report shows the aforementioned accident and list history in Massachusetts, New York, and Florida. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Carfax report. Uh, so yeah, last owned in Florida, we got nine years in Massachusetts, seven years in New York slash Florida. Um, that's not enough years, right? So that's only 20 years. This thing's uh, almost 30 years old. So yeah, from 95 through, let's see, uh, 2004. So basically for the first, um, 10 years ish, it was in Massachusetts, uh, 10,000 miles a year. And then in 2004, it went to New York where it spent, um, let's see. So yeah, roughly starting at 116 or 106,000 miles, uh, was there through, there's your accident, no details there. And then it looks like it went to Florida. Yeah. Sometime in 2012. So another six years in New York. So 16 years in places where line cruisers <laughs> go to die, uh, and yeah, really nothing else noted here on the Carfax. So just keep that in mind. The thing lived 16 years in, uh, in the Rust Belt. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into the photos. Let me maximize for viewing pleasure. And yeah, overall impressions, so just looking at it, like it looks like a really nice truck. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Again, the lighting does not give me dark emerald or emerald green pearl. So just keep, <laughs> keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, appreciate the roof rack delete. Um, yeah, sometimes people leave the these little strips that just is yeah quite a bit more work um, in order to get those out because they're also like screwed into the roof. But yeah, overall looks pretty good. The headlights are on. Corner markers seem to work. Um, yeah, the the lift in the tires that's a great combination. Then obviously it being deflared is yeah is a huge benefit. Yeah, so very clean, very clean looking truck just here from the outside. Couple little like maybe you know like a ding here in the driver door. Um, as we move to the side, yeah, this is just a clean profile. Uh, this will probably be, be the one that I'll use for my uh, my thumbnail because it, it does look so nice. Um, looks like there's from where the original like mud flaps were, perhaps there's like a little bit of like a line. It's super faint if there is anything on the rear bumper at there. Uh, looking here at the back, look at the gaps. Uh, yeah, a little bit bigger gap here on the left side. I'd presume, depending on the level of the repaint, that um, yeah, this hatch might have come off. If that were a big, and you know, as a result of that, it didn't get centered quite right. I feel like Toyota coming from the factory would have given yeah, a little bit better um, yeah centering there, but maybe not. Looks like a little ding here in this back cross member, and looks like they've polished up this uh, uh, yeah rear aluminum piece. And then looks like the 
I don't know. Like, it's hard sometimes to gauge whether or not these bumperettes are kind of like angled down. Um, I don't know. I'll maybe give this one a pass until we get a better photo. And I will note that the spare tire does not match the other four. All right, moving here to the passenger side. Yeah, that looks good. Again, those these photos are a little bit too oh, far out to tell. A little kind of mm, misalignment. Just looking at the... Um, yeah, let me look at these gaps again. So those look good. But yeah, looking at the just the paint line and the reflection here, just a little like jagged from the fender to the uh, front door, the rear, you know, the, the passenger door rather. And then it looks like on the front bumperette on this passenger side. Yeah, there shouldn't be a reflection there. So just some, yeah, some color going on. And then this particular style, 1994, they ended up with this little chrome kind of topper piece that goes on the front bumper and on the rear bumper. You can kind of see it back there. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty clean though. And um, yeah, looks nice. All right, peeking here a little bit on, at the undercarriage. Yeah, that looks good. That you know bright yellow Dobinson steering stabilizer or dampener looks great. And the undercarriage, at least from here, looks good as well. Uh, gaps here on the lower valence that all seems to match. Maybe a little bit bigger gap here above the headlight on the passenger side. And yeah, it seems like that gap you know is kind of pretty tight and normal here on the driver's side. And as you move across uh, the vehicle to the passenger side, yeah, it kind of widens a little bit. Maybe just a, li a little, but I, that could be nitpicking a little bit. Um, and maybe this lower bumper is kind of pushed up just a, just a titch on that passenger side. But otherwise, yeah, it looks good. I, I don't think most people would, would notice anything. Uh, yeah, it seems, seems pretty straight. But yeah, look at that. I like the setting too right here on, I, I presume this is in Tampa Bay. Um, I think you can see in the photos some pictures of the, what, the Sunshine Bridge. Um, but yeah, nice setting there for these photos. The lighting kind of leaves a little bit to be desired since I can't quite tell what actual color this is uh, yet. But yeah, look at that. With some like simple sliders and some mud flaps, this thing mm, would look so, so good. <laughs> you wouldn't even need the sliders. I'm just, you know, just like a little, I don't know. There's something about like a simple bar here just going to add, add something for me, but even though it's with it being lifted with these big tires, yeah, probably not required for most people. And maybe the lighting on this, maybe it's because all the white sand just makes it, yeah, kind of blows out the color. Because you can get little hints of green in, in some of these as he, you know, switches from the beach to, um, yeah, the pavement here. Yeah, maybe a little like nitpick. This uh, side marker light seems like it's a little bit in an angle. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to nitpick because the rest of it yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, but yeah, questions should be asked of how at least, you know, yeah, do they know to the extent that they know, you know, how these fender flare holes were filled in? Uh, were they welded in? Was there Bondo? You know, things of that nature. But yeah, you might not get um, information since that was done before they picked it up. But appreciate the different lighting conditions. That's a nice touch. Uh, just looking at a little kind of yeah, discontinuity here in the... Yeah, and the color, hopefully, of the paint right below this weather ship. Hopefully, we get a detailed shot of that. Um, yeah, just some minor scratches, it looks like, here. And let me zoom in at the bottom of this. Yeah, there's just some, like, kind of, like, red color here. Not sure I'd jump out and say that that's, yeah, that's rust. But we'll need to keep our eye out because 16 years in, uh, yeah, Massachusetts and New York can definitely do that. All right. Yeah, just thumb through the rest of these. I mean, yeah, we're still yet to get some detail shots here. All right, there's a detail shot. So, yeah, looking at the windshield, it's kind of blown out here to the sun. But, yeah, I don't really see any cracks, maybe a couple little uh, minor chips. A little scratch there. Yeah, this is all looking pretty good. Let me get a kind of a detail here. Yeah, it looks good. Not really seeing, like, any gross signs of, like, overspray. Yeah, and I got to remember, there's yeah, 329 photos of this thing. So <laughs> unless we keep keep scrolling, yeah, we'll never get never get through it. But yeah, now we're into the detail shots. You can see a little bit of corrosion here on this AC fitting. You know, peeking through the grill there. Just something, yeah, just something to is it like a kind of like a telltale for what's to come for the undercarriage. And I believe just based on looking at the undercarriage, it's been yeah, it's been like treated. So we want to because that's been addressed, we need to take in other signs in order to gauge what the condition was uh, in absence of any photos, you know, before they did that treatment. 
Um, but yeah, moving here to the driver's side of the vehicle, this front fender, it looks good. Again, I could feel that light's just a little, like you've got the angle here for the uh, for the body line. Uh, there's actually kind of two. There's this high spot and then kind of like this low spot. And like, yeah, it just isn't quite at that, that angle. Maybe it's flat, but I feel like they may have, maybe weren't flat, but I'm sure they could adjust it <laughs> if that bothers you like it does me. But yeah, we can definitely see the dark emerald pearl uh, coming through now in these photos. So that's, yeah, it's good to see that. All right working our way back here on the driver's side. Um, yeah, just one note, the side mirrors are painted body color. That's a nice touch. I don't recall, I don't think the, uh, the other Land Cruiser came with those in the, in the body color. So that's a nice kind of like little upgrade as a result of the paintwork. But yeah, if whatever they did to fill in the fender flare holes, that looks all pretty good. And then yeah, regarding the kind of the quality of the paint job, um, yeah, they didn't paint these gaskets, so that's that's a good indicator at least. And again, I haven't seen any you know kind of improper masking yet. But yeah, but overall, yeah, this looks looks pretty good. And having a hard time finding really anything to talk about. Uh, everything seems to be yeah you know, in order. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, moving here to the rear. Yeah, we need some detail shots. Uh, these are, these are all too far out. Uh, regarding that red, you know, we'll keep an eye on that as we look at these. Hopefully we get a nice, uh, you know, tight shot there of the bottom. But yeah, I mean, there's, you can see that red, there's definitely something there. And it looks like perhaps they, uh, screwed into the tailgate, uh, for another spot to mount the license plate. So it looks like there's another, another screw hole there. And then, but I don't really see one here on this right side. So that's, it's interesting. I was hoping this photo would would give me a little bit better idea as to what's going on at the bottom, but it's not. Um, the photo needs to be taken from a little lower angle. Uh, and same thing, this photo is not giving me quite the right spot. But you can see it looks like they polished that. It's kind of looking good. Yeah, I need a detail shot right here. That's what I'm looking for. About this angle. That's the right angle. Uh, you can tell the exhaust has been replaced. You know, Again, no surprise there since the cats have been uh, removed. Yeah, moving here to the um, to the passenger side. Again, this continues to look yeah pretty good, pretty clean. Uh, little color defect here on this little plastic uh, vent panel. Yeah, but overall, it seems like a yeah it seems like a pretty good paint job. I'm gonna try and speed up and get through some of these unless there's something really really jumping out at me, or else this video is gonna end up being like 40 minutes long. But yeah, this would look so much better with those front mud flaps. Just, just saying. <laughs> All right, so a little scratch. Yeah, the roof looks pretty good. So again, you would have had like feet, mounting feet for the roof rack in here. Looks like, yeah, they've done a decent job of uh, sealing those up. You can, yeah, not, not really even tell, but you can see how these, um, these little braces are, um, yeah, screwed in there. And some people like the look of, yeah, the little bit more like raised of a look there. Uh, maybe a little bit of a paint defect there on the roof. Otherwise, yeah, the roof looks pretty good. All right, looking at the wheels here. Yeah, those look nice. The, whoever did the powder coat seems to have done a pretty good job. Uh, interesting to note, I'm curious. Yeah, so 94 generally, 93, well, 91, 2, 3, and 4 for that matter, generally used an acorn style nut. Um, these particular wheel nuts look to be like the kind of like the flange or the uh, like the alloy the mag style where they've got like a big washer whereas again the, the wheels could accept or should accept like an acorn style now supposedly the the, the uh, toyota like machined a little bevel in the bottom of those mag style nuts which again these appear to be uh, in order to have them still work with these types of wheels but just personal curiosity uh, don't miss the opportunity in these photos to look behind at the rocker, um, you know, and really gauge what, what the condition of, yeah, kind of like the frame and the body is uh, in those spots where, yeah, they're not really, you know, having you look, right? All right, so I just kind of thumbed through these photos in advance. I didn't actually see a, a date code that they took a picture of. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes the date code's on the other side of the tire. Um, but yeah, they're load, rate, load range E. It's good that they're showing yeah, the tread depth. I think 15 or 16, uh, 30 seconds is the, yeah, the, the new depth on those. But yeah, this driver door card looks good. Just a little, little mark there. Yeah, it looks like this upper piece has been kind of re-leathered, re-upholstered, as has this, um, 
yeah, the little armrest. Good to see the original speaker cover there in place. And yeah, it looks like this is a yeah, pretty decent leather kit. Looks pretty good. Carpet looks great. They did say that they had replaced it. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's kind of like the lube style carpet that matches yeah, the original. Looks pretty good. All right, looking at the steering wheel, that looks great, at least that we can tell. Yeah, all the leather surfaces, all the touch surfaces, those all look yeah, quite good. Again, the seat and the carpet, that is a nice, very nice update yeah, for anybody looking to get this. Um, yeah, so there's your uh, dial for the, your dial switch for the triple lockers, or for, rather for the, yeah, for the front and the rear. Um, yeah, this this looks look pretty good here. Uh, looking at the floor again, yeah, that looks good with that aftermarket carpet and there's your WeatherTech mat. Um, little little bit of sun damage here. These dome light switches though, they yeah, <laughs> they end up kind of looking like that. But yeah, overall, yeah, that looks pretty good. But yeah, 201,855 miles. Uh, looking here at the yeah, the center console, you may think that this piece was um, yeah painted afterward. Uh, I believe that's the original color for the 91, 2, 3, and 4 um, yeah, kind of lower center console pieces. And I am pretty sure, uh, given the how this particular truck is outfitted with the, um, yeah, the leather wrap steering wheel, the center... Um, or the shift handle would have had leather on it as well, but that's been removed. And then looks like a center diff lock switch has been installed. You can see the Pioneer radio there. Uh, it does have the rear heater. Everything else looks yeah, good and normal. Uh, the dash does not appear to be crashed, cracked, at least that I can tell. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this red thing is. Um, it could be something you know just on the floor from the photographer. But yeah, that all looks good. Lots of detailed photos. You kind of know exactly what you're what you're getting there. Looks like the AC works and yeah, looking towards the passenger seat, that looks good. This view from the back, it looks like the nets are, yeah, are tight as well. Um, yeah, it just seems that everything is yeah, in place and looking, looking just fine. Yeah, no cracks on the dash. Uh, the plastic pieces around the sunroof, or at least on this driver's side, those are in place. Uh, looks like we might not get a photo of, oh, there we go. There's the photo. And it looks like the, the visor on the driver's side stays up and is functional. Uh, that's something that kind of falls apart on these vehicles um, yeah, as they age. Moving to the passenger side of the front. Yeah, that carpet looks good and new. The seat looks good. Very nice. Nothing really to note here. A little like misfitment here of this uh, the seat kit, but yeah, I'll forgive it <laughs> just because it's updated and it looks nice. Looking at the driver or the passenger door card, yeah, everything looks good there. Rear door card, same thing. Nice detail shot here of the yeah the passenger kind of armrest in the little cubby, and yeah, no signs of paintless dent repair on those doors. Uh, nice clean carpet again we do not have the little seat covers or the the bracket or the the foot covers for the seats um looks like we've got them on the driver's seat but not on the passenger seat and then it looks like um yeah, a little bit of a miscut here for the uh for the carpet around yeah these seats could be the same thing over on this side but yeah just something worth noting it's it's hard to get those right um yeah and you wish you know going through all that effort to get a new piece of carpet in there that yeah those would be 100 percent, but yeah not always it's pretty tough uh, second row looks good. Seatbelts all look good. I didn't. I don't know if we got a good look at the driver's seatbelt, um, but yeah, I'd presume that that's that's good and that they took that took care of that. But yeah, just same thing, kind of a little bit of a maybe a carpet miscut or just carpet misfitment. Yeah, second row looks looks good. Looks fine. Yeah, and these photos, the ones you can see of the exterior, yeah, they're showing that uh, dark emerald pearl color. Yeah, quite a bit better. Uh, rear driver's side um, door jam and door look fine. Yeah, I really with this being a you know a northeast vehicle, I really want to see the bottoms of each of these doors in detail, but not sure we're going to get that. Uh, one of the telltales we use for corrosion, or at least that I use, is this uh, handle here on the upper hatch. Hopefully, we get a better photo than that. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit too washed out there to be able to tell what's going on. Yeah, take an opportunity to look at the headliner. It looks like after they did the, you know, welding or whatever they did for the roof. Um, yeah, that that, um, that was put back. I did recall in the comments, I think the, the seller indicated that there's some part that's not totally flush. Maybe it's up here at the B pillar on the, um, on the passenger side, but I can't remember. All right, looking here at the 
cargo area and where the third row seats would be. So the mounting provisions aren't there. Um, I believe the seats are included based on what we read previously. Um, but I also think I see that the seat belts, the third row seat belts aren't there. Um, so if that's something that you, if you need that third row and you don't have any of these provisions, um, you can actually reach out to me. I'm about to throw away a set of third row seats. Um, kind of a shame that they painted this uh, sill piece. It's normally like a kind of like a polished, uh, you know, metal look. Um, I don't know. Maybe I could be convinced, but yeah, I, I kind of like the um, yeah the silver look there. Kind of gives it a little bit more like heritage and age. <laughs> But otherwise, yeah, that looks good. Looks like maybe a little yeah, burn spot here in the lower. And this was obviously replaced too. This isn't kind of the way the factory piece is finished either. But yeah, it looks like this thing got a full carpet kit. So it's a, obviously a nice touch. Probably cleans it up quite a bit. And yeah, these little, yeah, what you don't want to do. So see how these uh, straps are kind of latched onto here. So there are these little pockets and that's where they're supposed to go. So you'd, you'd want to tuck those into there so that, yeah, you don't run the risk of yeah folding the seat down and, and breaking these, um, yeah, the plastic or breaking the handle themselves. So, all right, moving to the engine bay, it's got the little hood liner in place. And like we saw in the early photos, yeah, the engine bay looks quite, uh, quite clean, quite immaculate. It looks like they've spent a lot of work both cleaning it and yeah, updating, um, you know, like replacing the radiator, doing the valve cover gasket. It looks very, very fresh. Uh, with this being a 1994, yeah, we're not going to see uh, VIN stickers. Toyota wasn't doing them, you know, on these vehicles at that time. Um, but yeah, no signs of yeah oil leakage. That all looks yeah just great. You can see those new battery terminals. Um, yeah, if we got detailed shots of like the bolts, you could maybe tell whether or not you know it had been. Uh, you know, the fenders have been removed for the repaint and kind of get an idea for, for how that was. But yeah, looking down here, yeah, you've got the blue fan clutch. That's a nice upgrade that people do. looks like, um, yeah, this little, I think it's a coolant pipe. Um, yeah, it's got a little interesting finish in, on it. Normally it matches the, you know, the finish on these other pipes. So that's, yeah, just a little, little curious. looks like they've painted it with something, same thing with these exhaust shields. Um, so that's a good point. You know, we're s starting to see a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of corrosion here. Seeing that, you know, them painting the ex exhaust shields, yeah, it makes me a little nervous. Um, but everything in the engine bay, like so far, looks good. It could be much worse. Uh, we've seen, you know, when vehicles. Although I see here in the in the foreframe, it's kind of hard to show because it looks relatively dark. But yeah, this fastener could be pretty rusted. And yeah, these fasteners up front in those rust belt states, yeah, they kind of get worse. You know, they're they're like the worst ones on the vehicle. Um, so we see a little bit of that, but overall it, it does seem yeah, quite clean for it being, um, yeah, coming from the Northeast, but you see little glimpses of it. You can see a little rust here on this, uh, upper core support bar and yeah, it looks like the headlight mount's been broken, you know, again, that can be an indication of an accident could be, yeah, just somebody taken out and they dropped it like who knows. And then looks like this little, uh, you know, viewport. I don't I actually don't know what these are used for, but it looks like that one on the um, passenger side is pretty, pretty chewed up. And then it looks like it, the mount here on the, um, yeah, the passenger side, like the outboard mount was also repaired at some point. Whereas the driver's side, yeah, this looks like it, you know, wasn't repaired. So that's a little, little curious as to why that's broken. Um, but yeah, you might not get an answer to that. There's your battery terminals. All right, moving to the undercarriage. So yeah, this has definitely been retreated. Uh, we can see, like we saw it and mentioned, you know, early on, uh, we can see that, yeah, there has been some rust on the skid plate. So a couple different questions. It sounds like the rust proofing was done or the rust remediation was done by the current seller. Um, so I would assume we will get some pictures of the, you know, the pre-state. Um, but yeah, you want to be really sensitive to stuff like this uh, and what measures were taken to, um, you know, to rehab this. So for instance, you know, is there corrosion under the strap here? Did they remove the strap? Did they drop the, you know, the tank? Uh, looking at, let's see, there was one other spot in this, uh, this photo. Oh, you know, seeing, you know, some of the bubbling here in the texture, um, you know, that, that should give you a little concern. Uh, same thing here. I mean, it looks, it looks good. It looks fine and it's probably quite structural, but yeah, you need to just keep in mind this thing is, you know, had lived 16 years in, yeah, in some of the worst conditions. Same thing, I would want like a detail photo back here. This this kind of red color that we're seeing might just be on the shield for this muffler, uh, but maybe, maybe not. 
Uh, all of the, I will mention all of the diffs in the transfer case, yeah, they all have nice new plugs. Um, so again, that could be an indicator like the old ones are like rusted on there or that they, um, you know, they just wanted to replace them and be proactive. But yeah, looking behind in the distance on some of these uh, photos and looking and asking for more, yeah, more, more photos and more detail, yeah, might be helpful. Um, because yeah, they can, they can kind of, you know, hide for lack of a better word. They can hide a lot of stuff, you know, behind, um, yeah, behind this coating. Yeah, overall, it seems yeah quite structural, but yeah, if you look at some of these brackets, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of texture uh, on those. Uh, moving here up front, there were a couple things that I wanted to talk about. So this, and it all relates to the uh, yeah the corrosion <laughs> situation. So it looks good, you know, it's all kind of black in color, um, but this is an aftermarket um, power steering cooling. Uh, little unit. Uh, the factory, the original kind of bracket for it, at least one of them, this one's kind of bent up and out of the way. You can see a little bit of corrosion. But yeah, those things probably like rust out a little bit. Uh, and it looks like they've used just a regular, I don't know, like some sort of Phillips like wood screw <laughs> to get into the into the frame cross member here. So that's certainly a little curious. Um, but again, that's just an indication probably of yeah, the corrosion situation on this truck. Let me zoom back out and see if there's anything else that kind of catches my attention. Oh, and by the way, we talked about the, the photos or earlier of the tires. With these being uh, white wall tires, I believe the date code is going to be on the inside on the white wall side. So, yeah, those photos earlier, if they were the detail ones, if they're intended to show the date codes, yeah, they weren't because the date codes are probably on the side. But, uh, yeah, nothing else really jumping out at me in that photo. Um, you know, as far as yeah, corrosion undercarriage condition, yeah, it looks like in fact the Burfields were serviced. Those all look good. Um, everything seems yeah quite dry as well. Not seeing any issues there. But yeah, just that. Again, if a if a skid plate for a fuel tank can corrode like that, yeah, what about what about the rest of it? That's just a question you should be asking. Um, with that being said, though, so sometimes when the metal corrodes, it kind of starts to like laminate. And for the most part, in one of the areas where you see that happen first is this uh, kind of mid frame cross member, this transmission cross member. And we don't really get any signs of that here uh, until we get to this outboard edge. And you kind of see it start to laminate and kind of split apart. And then, yeah, a little bit of texture there on the frame. Um, but the body behind it, that looks pretty good. Um, you know, even the bolts on the transfer case, like those look like they're okay. Uh, a little bit of lamination here on this side of that um, transmission cross member. The body, you know, back behind and above the, uh, the other rear axle here looks okay. One area that's a little concerning that I see in the photo here, and this is, again, you're seeing the rear differential locker um, and looking just above the axle. Let me see if I can kind of pan up. So this right here, I would, and over on this side as well, so I would ask for a detailed photo um, Yeah, above, I guess that would be above the spare tire and above that spare tire carrier. Um, to my untrained eye in this distance, that very well could be a hole there's quite a dark spot and we kind of see some like kind of flakiness above it too yeah so this under treatment yeah it can certainly hide hide a lot um here's your front differential there's your locker on that one um yeah i mean that that looks that looks fine nice and nice and dry it seems all right so here's some photos of the i guess the pre-condition again doesn't look awful just you know just mostly some texture yeah, I want some better photos just above here with the spare tire. <laughs> uh, let me zoom in here at the top of this image. I do appreciate all of these these photos. Um, yeah, it's definitely helpful. Um, yeah, so seeing kind of like the that lamination I talked about, you know, where you get the paint kind of bubbling around some of the holes, you can kind of see that happening there. Obviously, that's that spot in particular is yeah, quite minor. There's that front cooler again. Hmm. I feel like there's a bolt missing on this bracket uh, here on the side of the transmission. <laughs> oh, this is the, uh, yeah, that's what it is. This is the transmission uh, dipstick. So yeah, that, you need to get a bolt in there and tie that, tie that sucker down. Uh, spares mounted upside down and it's super old. Oh, come on, Manny. <laughs> I'm going to say Manny like I actually know him, but... 
Yeah, replace the spare tire. Like it's an extra, you know, like, I don't know, 300 bucks. Oh, that looks so sad. And when you do it, you can take photos of the undercarriage behind it. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some detail. I want I want this like all out of the way. I want I want better photos uh, up behind here. That spot in that one photo, um, yeah, looked looked a little suspicious. Uh, here's some more photos of the pre condition. Again, not really not bad. Yeah, so this is the back. This is that area. Yeah, um, that shadow. Yeah, that that's worth. I think just like one extra photo would yeah go a long way there. Um, back to the idea of this thing being repainted. You can see a little bit of like kind of paint the separation here. Um, you know, as they you know. So it looks like they didn't take off the doors, basically, but they painted yeah right up to those those doors, perhaps, but masked it properly. Um, but yeah, K two nine four truck. That's the the code for the triple locker. And yeah, there's your stickers. Uh, yeah, it looks like they masked around here. There's a little bit of bleed, but yeah, it looks like the seats do include the brackets. So yeah, you just kind of need bolts. Um, although rear seat belts uh, aren't pictured, so if you need those, let me know. I've got them in gray for this particular truck. Yeah, so overall, this thing it looks it looks nice. Uh, good looking truck. I with the clarification of that one spot in in yeah one of those undercarriage photos. Let me just pull that up for. Um, you know, just for clarification purposes. Yeah, there's so many photos. Nice work. Yeah, so with clarification of what this is, you know, just beyond this, uh, it's what you're seeing here, you got this coil spring. Just behind it, you've got, there's a rear um, kind of cross member that goes basically right in front of the spare tire right above it. And yeah, so whatever this is, I want a detailed photo of that. So notwithstanding that, let's say that that checks out and that looks good, then... Yeah, I think more or less maybe the corrosion situation has more or less been mitigated. I wouldn't expect it to be yeah perfect. These bolts, while they have, you know, and all the fasteners and stuff, while they've been cleaned. And by the way, the spare tire was upside down. can't remember if I mentioned that or not. Not to mention it not matching the rest and being old. <laughs> um, what, what was I saying? So... Yeah, notwithstanding those issues, I think you're still, when you deal with some of the mechanical things, and especially, you know, suspension or frame mounted things, you're going to deal with corrosion. It's going to be a little bit of a pain. Um, it, again, looks looks pretty nice, but that's going to half the battle. Some of these fasteners just get seized in there. So um, so let's think about our our price and our rule of thumb, right? So for 200,000 miles, um, triple lockers, um you know, and clean, right? No accidents, which this one, you know, had a little minor thing that we don't know much about. Um, $30,000 is kind of the number. I think prices are kind of sliding off that a little bit, um, but a lot of work has gone into this and in making it what it is. So other than that, right, it's not a 40th anniversary edition. It's not a collector's edition. So there aren't really modifiers that are going to push us, you know, above 30K, um, again, besides the restoration work. So you've got like on one side of the scale, a lot of restoration work, a lot of money spent. Uh, but on the other side, you've got, you know, 16 years in New York that, you know, you're just going to have to remedy. And if it's a big deal, if you don't want to deal with rest, I would yeah, highly recommend not going for this vehicle. Another thing that we haven't touched on for a while is that there are no catalytic converters on this. So that's going to be an issue. You're going to have to get those cut in if you need to pass emissions yeah, in your state, um, you know, or where you're living. So those are things that I think can rule out, you know, like super high value. And so I think as a result of that, um, yeah, my, my guess is like high twenties on this. I don't, I don't think it's going to go over 30. It may, cause it looks cool and it's, you know, it's got, you know, it's deflared and all that stuff, but yeah, there's, there's a chance it doesn't push above 30. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to say, yeah, 27, let's say 27, 750, just to make it hard on myself and keeping track of this. Yeah. So definitely a lot of love and effort has been into put this one and yeah, hopefully it pays off for the seller. So well, those are my thoughts on this one. Appreciate you watching this video. I uh, hope you have a great day and please take care of yourself. See ya.